Hello, this is Gazelig doing my first full length video for grinderschool.com. Uh, I hope you liked my shorts on short stack play and found them useful. Uh, today I'm going to do a hand history uh, review for one of the subscribers, Rondo PG, uh, uh, playing a tournament on the uh, on the merge network. Uh, I guess we'll call him Rondo from here to make things a bit easier. Um, I do know his real name, but not sure if he wants me to say it, so I guess we'll just stick with. Uh, with Rondo. Uh, so Rondo's told me he's primarily an SNG player, single player, transitioning to multi-table tournaments. Um, I think that's a really good way to do it. And if you listen to my podcast interview, it's exactly how I started playing MTTs. Uh, I had a really good one table SNG game and then gradually I was playing more tables, uh, more multi-table sit and goes up to the 180s and then switched over to MTTs. So I hope I can pick up some good spots in this video for anyone else thinking of transitioning from sit and goes to MTTs. Uh, and give Rondo some useful constructive feedback. Right then, let's get started. So, first hand here, um, just a quick discussion on uh, early blind levels when it's, the stacks are so deep. Uh, I really like to play really, really tight uh, and get maximum value from my from my strong hands. Uh, so we'll see uh, how Rondo PG likes to likes to go th um, play these. Um, this stage of the tournament, uh, I'm guessing it'll be similar to how he plays the early stages of a sit and go. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll press play. We'll uh, just go through it. If there's any spots um, that need discussing, then I'll stop it and we can and we can rewind. Uh, hopefully it'll go through quick enough. Uh, this playback speed. Obviously they're king two off suit. We're just going to fold. Um, not sure if this uh, this will work. So well, just having the uh, having the play button uh, on. So we'll just we'll just see what happens. Uh, I just like it like this, just to get a feel for for game flow. Um, obviously, checking the seven deuce here, uh, checking it around. That was, yeah, checking that's fine. Uh, nothing really to say. Wouldn't lead there at all. Uh, you're just not getting uh, value from anything worse, really. Uh, and yet, yeah, just checks down. Uh, as you can see, player decided uh, to check his uh, his ace on the flop. So as I said, yeah, just playing really, really uh, tight, aggressive game at this stage of the tournament. Uh, you know, th hands like ace jack suited plus uh, pairs. Uh, probably, um, probably any suited ace actually. Um, hope that you know, in positions better than better than out out of position. Um, I'm just going to pause, I'm just going to stop it here. Um, I don't like this flat really at all with a6. Um, I just think he's just going to be dominated so often. Um, doesn't really, doesn't flop any sort of straight draws. Um, I, I don't mind calling here with a6 suited uh, to the min raise. Uh, I just think a6 off suits really, really weak. Um, you know. If we hit an ace, we you know our kick is really really bad. Um, yeah, I, I don't like it at all. As as played, obviously up to the three bet and the, the four bet jam. Obviously, we're just we're just folding. And interesting uh, to note that this uh, straight flush thirty guy likes to uh, three bet there pretty big um, with seven six off suit. Might be something you can pick up on later. They decide to open here at a two and a half x stage. I don't mind two and a half x um, at this stage. I'd probably get, make it three x, but I don't think it's it's a problem making it at a two point five x here. Um, I might sometimes play uh, jack ten off suit here. I prefer to have jack ten suited at this stage of the tournament, uh, but I don't I don't mind this at all. I uh, get one caller. Um, Great board to see bet. Um, the ace high flop, two lowish cards. Um, he's probably continuing with you know straight draws, flush draws, an ace, possibly, possibly an eight. Um, then if he would call with the six, it's difficult to say. Um, you make a c bet, one ten. Let's just go back. Um, yeah, I, I don't mind this sizing. Uh, I think that's I think that's pretty good. Um, you could make it anywhere between half pot and 
uh, two thirds pot, so anything between 90 and 120 here. Um, I think at this level as well, you can you can make your C bet smaller when you when you don't have it and make them bigger when you do have it. Um, you know that's that is really exploitable uh, higher up, but I feel at these levels you can uh, you can get away with a lot more. So you could bet slightly less there, but I mean you'd only be saving yourself 20 chips, which is a moment less than a big blind. Uh, so I don't I don't mind this at all. I think that's uh, I think that's good. Uh, you get called. At this point, I'm just uh, I'm shutting down. Um, we've got Jack High. He may either have a flush draw or a straight draw, but I think I just uh, I just give up now. And he leads the, the turn, and he just fold. That's absolutely fine. You hear Jack ten off suit again. Side to fold to the to the min raise. I think that's that's really good. It's going to be dominated so often. Uh, so this wide Deutsche guy is to be uh, opening quite a few hands, getting quite loose. Uh, he calls that three bet out of position, which is um, quite weak, uh, unless he obviously has a has a really strong hand. And he's trying to uh, to induce and, and check shove with uh, his stack size over a, over a C bet, but isn't the case there. Yeah, folding the 4 2 off suit. It's pretty standard. Yeah, so it might be worth noting the uh, straight flush. Uh, let's just replay that hand. Oops. Um, so he, he limps from early position with 4s and then calls it off to a 40 big blind shove. Um, that's I think I think that's really really poor. You could note that about this guy. We've already seen him shove the seven six off suit. He's clearly prepared to gamble, probably overvaluing small pairs like pocket fours. Um, I didn't mind the uh, three bet with seven six off of the squeeze. Um, in the sense that he should have got this uh, guy over here to to fold the majority of his of his range. Um, but here he's he's calling off him and he's getting he needs forty six point six percent just to to break even here um, and I mean yeah let's just have a quick let's just have a quick look in poker so let's bring this over uh, pocket fours um, let's have a think so let's say this guy's uh, who shoved in for forty bigs has let's just for example say any Broadway any pair. So even against that range, um, which is, is is really really loose for showing forty big blinds here to to a a limp uh, min min raise ISO, um, you know, with not getting the right. Oh, sorry, he's not getting the right equity um, to make this uh, a profitable call. So I think that's really really interesting uh, to note. I brought that in there just just to show you, um, give you an idea of how uh, we can work out whether something is, is profitable or, or not. I know it's not um, Rondo's uh, cards or play that we're, we're critiquing here, but it's just interesting, I think, an interesting spot just to to pick up on and how uh, how players can, can overvalue small pairs and how they're probably not thinking about um, equity uh, in these spots. So let's uh, let's continue. If blinds up to 50, we still have over over 50 bigs. Uh, still looking to play really really tight, which is good. Here, I'm hoping you don't don't defend the a6 off suit. No, that's good. So just folding there. I think I might flat with a suited ace um, three way, but yeah. Unsuited ace, just just letting it go. Okay, um, let's just scroll back. Really pretty, pretty good odds, five to one. 
no, here to make the call. I think I think it's it's okay. Uh, I prefer obviously to have a, a suited ace, just because when you you know when you draw to the flush, and um, you know you're drawing to the nuts, whereas uh, you're not with a with a, a suited king. Uh, but I still think it's I still think it's it's okay here uh, for so small a uh, few chips and seeing as it's it's multi way um, flop bottom pair. I think in this spot, I mean, he could have quite a wide range um, here for C betting. You know, any A6 hand, any pairs, um, possibly King Queen. Although he, you know, he is betting into four other players, so you expect his range to be that much tighter. Uh, unless he's just deciding to half pot C bet his entire range and just trying to get everyone to fold. I mean, it's a fantastic board to do it on. It's a rainbow board, paired board. Uh, it's quite difficult for someone to have hit this really hard. Um, so his, you know, this could be a C bet bluff. Um, but with the player to act behind us, I would, I would always fold this. And you do, which is, uh, which is good. Uh, and moving on. Okay, so why Deutschery with forty bigs is still opening. Opening quite a lot. He's double barreled there. Be interesting to see what he checks down. A pair of sixes, so I do think that's that's it's quite an interesting spot again. Uh we've already seen this Y Dodger guy is is quite loose, he's opening a lot. Uh, and we've seen that straight flush is uh, is a bit of a fish. So if I was in Y Dodger's spot I'd Suddenly, on the turn, he's decided to turn his pair of sixes into a um, into a bluff. Uh, this is a, a scare card as an as an over card, um, but I just think it's quite difficult to get straight flush to to fold much on this board. He possibly has a flush draw, uh, but if he has an eight or an a jack, he eight or a jack, he's probably calling. Um, so I think I probably check back the turn if I was in Y Deutsch's shoes. Um, and uh, and just move on. Right, let's let's do that. Let's move on. Okay, is he still opening? So, uh, so again, interesting play by both players. Uh, we've already said that this guy's opening a lot of hands. Um, I don't, to be honest, I don't mind his uh, his call on the turn. It's very difficult for Poker Donk to have had a had a king there. Um, and if he did, he was not just going to jam it in on the turn, um, like Donk jam. So, so I actually don't mind the uh, Y Deutsch's call there with the uh, second pair. Um, Poker Donk's play, I think, is just horrendous. Uh, he's only getting called really by hands that beat him. Uh, as was the case. Um, let's move on. The Jack Nine. This time, why Dodger's decided to check at the flop. It's interesting. He decided to check uh, on a dangerous board with middle pair with some showdown value. And once again, straight flush showing us that he's a complete fish. Like right, shoving in with King Seven off. Okay, so opening up fifty big blinds, Ace Ten off. Um, let's just pause this a minute. I think that's okay. I'd sooner have Ace Ten suited here. Uh, if you get called by someone in position. Uh, the chances of you being dominated are, are quite high. Uh, ace jack, ace queen, ace king. Seeing as you're raising from early position, uh, ace king might just just flat in position. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I, I I think it's okay. I think I my I would probably go for ace ten suited as my my weakest hand here, and probably ace ace jack, maybe even ace queen. 
um, from from early position. Um, let's just play this through. So uh, you decide to make a C bet, two thirds pot on here. I think you could probably go a little bit smaller on here. Um, it's a paired board. It'd be very difficult for him to continue without a king um, or a flush draw, possibly. Uh, it's unlikely to have a four in his flatting range here, but he's you know he could easily have uh, Broadway hands, king king x type of, uh, type of hands, king x Broadway, and king queen, king ten, king jack. Um, possibly ace king if you decided to just flat uh, in position, thinking your your raise was strong and that if he three bet you'd fold the majority of the hands that uh, he beats like ace ten. Uh, so he might be thinking that he wants to keep those hands in. Um, so I think you could probably go a little bit smaller. You could probably go to one fifty. Uh, of course, you might be calling with uh, a pair between let's say fives to jacks here as well on the flop. Um, he does call, so now we can say, okay, maybe he has a, a pair, as I've just mentioned, a king x type of hand, or um, or a flush draw. So here, I think the only hands we get to probably fold, maybe some smaller pairs. Uh, the flush draw is probably call. Um, you know, if he's causing a flush draw on the on the flop, he's going to call a flush draw on the on the turn as well, uh, out of position. So I don't mind a check back here, possibly to call a river bet if it, um, there's no diamond, uh, just with our ace high, or we can just let that go as well. So here you could, I mean, the pot, if we'd bet just a uh, smaller on the flop, uh, the pot size would be a little bit uh, smaller. I mean, we could bet slightly smaller again. So we could bet sort of 280. Uh, sorry, we could bet. Yeah, that's right. So 280 into 600 would be fine. But here I think I would probably just, just check back. Um, I'm not looking really to, to try and bluff this guy off, you know, pocket eights, nines, tens. At this stage, I think there's going to be easier spots to pick up chips. And if we check, we can might hit a miracle queen. Um, or maybe even a ten or ace would be good as well. Um, so uh, we do bet and he check raises. Makes you think he has a decent king. Maybe king jack, maybe pocket jacks um, you know, for value. I think this is unlikely to be a flush draw. Uh, obviously, it's a great spot to fold. Let's carry on. A straight flush, sticking it in with 13 bigs from early position, pre ante. Uh, here we've got kings. Great result with straight flush in the limping in the pots. Shame he hasn't got as many chips anymore. Uh, he decided to make it. Uh, 5x, I think that's that's great. Straight flush decides to get it in with a7 suited, and we hold, which is nice, picking on a few few chips at least. 13 bigs added to our stack. Okay, so with the a6 suited, um, I think that's a fine fold there. I mean, you have 50 over 50 bigs. Um, we know this guy's opening pretty wide, but I think if we hit, we might not get value from. Uh, from this guy, just because he's playing such a wide range, is unlikely to to give us that much action. Uh, possibly, if I was in the big blind, I might flat a six suited against wide Deutsche just because we know he's we've seen him open uh, seven uh, six five off suit, so we're you know completely crushing that. Um, but we, you know he's opening really wide range against this sort of guy. There, uh, I'd much prefer to flat in position and outplay him post flop. Uh, he should a player like this is is likely to turn his hand face up on the uh post flop so you should be able to play pretty optimally against them um so let's carry on pocket tens here decide to three bet uh we know that why Deutsche is opening a wide range doesn't like to fold three bets i think this is a really good um three bet for value uh, you know he's going to be calling with pretty much every hand he's opening with um, so I, I do really I do really like the, the three bet for value there I don't often three bet hands like pocket tens this early in the tournament like pre ante but I think in this spot we've seen him uh, be really really loose and uh, we, it's a great spot to uh, pick up some some value by by raising and playing in position 
So here you decide to bet just less than half pot, uh, which I think is really, really good. Uh, as a C bet, probably for value as well, um, rather than trying to make him think that you have uh, hit that queen. Um, and he does just fold. So he picks up a nice bit of value there by three betting the fish or the loose fish pre. He goes again. So it's pretty standard that he's opening a lot of pots and, and C betting half pot. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if he's, he's doing that with uh, his entire range. I mean, we saw him check back the uh, middle pair on the um, on the dangerous at uh, the uh, one tone uh, flop. The so poker donk three point five xing, getting called. Uh, not sure what happened there. Didn't get to see the hand. That's a shame. Uh, just why Deutschy won. Okay, and sometimes loose players pick up hands as well. So that's what happened there. Okay. Uh, I'm really not a fan of calling with with weakish hands um, here out of position. It's going to be so so difficult to play. Even if you flop big, uh, trying to get value from it, it's going to be very very difficult. Uh, so I think I, I would just fold. I might possibly call Jack Nine suited again, probably after anti's have come in, um, just because it has has more value and gives you an opportunity to to bluff more. Uh, you know, to, to check raise bluff more flops. Um, but here it's, it's you know jack nine off suit you've really got to hit the, the board really hard and he used to say that why well, Deutsch hit it hard enough for you to get value as well um, as played here uh, we have uh, 30 bigs behind we do have the uh, the gut shot I think if we if we check and you see but if he bets really small then I might I might call one street um, but if he decides to, to bet anything more than Say two thirds pot. I mean, his standard was half half pot, but I mean, we we do only have the gut shot. So, if he bets anything, if he bets half or more, then I, I would just fold in this spot. Um, if we had Jack Nine suited in this spot, then and we know that he C bets almost a hundred percent, then I would check raise um, this spot just because of how much equity we have in the hand and chances chances to improve. Um, but here, I think I just I just fold. You decide to call. Um, um, but I think that's I think that's that's good on the on the river to go for value of the jack. Uh, when he checks back the turn, I, th I would guess now that he has some some piece of the board or maybe just ace ace high. Um, so on the when the the jack hits, going for value. If he's hit any piece of this, he's probably going to call. Um, so. And if he has ace high, maybe you get him to call there as well. Um, so I think that's a good good value bet on the river. Um, and he does call. And he has the uh, a seven. So that's interesting. That he's see betting the half pot with middle pair and deciding to to give up on this uh, on this turn, but it'll still call call a bet. So I think I think that's uh, it. I like the value bet on the river. Um, I think the call pre-flop and the call on the flop were pretty marginal. Uh, it's probably something I wouldn't I wouldn't have done. Um, so just something to to think about. So forty bigs pick up ace queen off. Uh, definitely going to isolate. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it's really good. Four xing there. Um, it's good. Isolating poker donk. Um, it's 10 LD, 22 guy decides to call. Um, so I, I quite like the less than half pot bet here. Um, obviously, when you've you flop an ace um, with ace queen here, I don't think you can ever really fold. If he's got ace jack or ace eight, then well played him. 
Uh, so I'd like the small bet to give this guy the opportunity with a flush draw or a straight draw to, to come back over the top. Um, so yeah, I quite like that. You could go a little bit smaller uh, to try and induce something, but actually you've got to think about this guy uh, having this many chips. If you make it too small, this guy raises and then it's going to be difficult because it's not a full raise. Um, but yeah, I, li I like I like what you've done here. Um, that's really good. And he's got to fade the 10. Uh, unfortunately, we don't. Uh, but no, that's really, I think that was really well played. Uh, so down to 35 bigs. Pokedonk getting it in again. We seven off, yep, good fold. So down to 35 bigs. 35 bigs is probably the point at which I'm, uh, I stop uh, trying to set mine. Uh, I'm probably looking just to play very, you know, very strong hands at this point. With 35 bigs, when antis are in, I'd obviously open up much, much more looking to steal, get to make uh, chips that way, uh, build up a stack that way. Um, here, I think the limps behind is fine. Here, I'd do exactly the same. Um, an interesting spot. Okay, yeah, now it's just an easy fold. No, nice river. Uh, so 2.2 exiting at this stage. Um, not really seen um, your opening size was at other levels. 50 went to 135, so that's just under three. Here we're going to 2.2x. I think that's good um, for doing that 2.2x as long as you keep it standard for this for this level, this board. Um, so many players in the in the pot. I think it, I think a big C bet is is really good here. Uh, maybe if it was just you against one opponent, possibly two opponents, you could make it slightly smaller, looking them, uh, for them to think their you know their king x hands good or um, their flush draw is good or their straight draw or their you know pocket tens is good and getting them to shove over the top. But here with so many players, it's it's likely that someone's picked up something on here. So I like it. I like the big bet. Um, poker dunk has to shove in. Um, Just looking at this, I, I'm not. I think I prefer a, a, a shove here. I think you're trying to get this guy to come along, but he's now got fantastic odds um, to draw to to something like a flush. I mean, yeah, he's putting in the re half of the rest of his stack. Um, but I think we're trying to um, emphasise the mistakes made by players. Uh, I think I would shove here, and I, I'd expect him to call as well. Um, seeing as he's already committed a third of his his stack, um, and he does just call, and then you shove, and he calls. Oh, he did have the the, the king, um, so it worked out nicely. So yeah, I think that hand was played well. I think I might possibly just shove the um, shove the flop. Oh, when you call, it does look quite strong. Uh, I think shoving perhaps looks a little bit weaker. But we got the uh, desired outcome, which is uh, which is great. They're up to eighty six bigs, which is nice. Okay, so um, defending again with a weak jack, jack eight off suit. I mean. I just don't like to do it, even with with antis. Um, it might be a hand, possibly that I might three bet, um, you know, light three bet against the late position open, just because we know this this guy's trying to steal quite a lot. He's opening a lot, um, but I just, I just don't like it. And also the the donk as well. Um, he might now just be min raising because he knows that donks donks are weak, and if you had a decent ace x hand or you know a set on this board then you would probably go for a check raise. So he might just be doing that uh, with like with air, but um, so that's why I don't really like the, the donk bet here. Uh, and then you've got to just fold anyway. Could have saved ourselves a few chips there. 
Um, King Jack off suit then, so yeah, early position raise. Good, yeah, I would definitely just, just fold that there. So got 80 big blinds, loads of room to work. Uh, so here you 2.3 exit uh, rather than 2.2x. Just pause that a minute. Um, I'll try and keep it standard, keep it the same all the way through if you can. So you had 2.2x with the aces and 2.3x when trying to steal it. I mean, if you're going to try and um, steal the blinds, you could make it smaller from, from late position um, with with your entire range, not just uh, things, hands like suited kings. Um, but I think uh, the best way to do it, in, in my opinion, is just to keep the, uh, the race size standard for each blind level. Uh, he decides to check raise us. We flat in position. I like the flat. Um, could be too easy just to to shove there, thinking he's he's bluffing. Um, but I suppose we can find out if he's bluffing um, on the turn. A lot of players don't. Uh, if the, if he is bluffing, he possibly will check the turn like he did do and fold to our fold to our bet. Um, so I think that I mean it was really I think that was well played. Uh, just flattening position, giving him a chance to uh, to show us how strong his hand is, and we try and steal it um, if he does. The only thing with that is if he is going for a check raise on the on the turn, we lose the opportunity to draw to our to our flush. Um, but if we check this back and it breaks out, then this guy can bet, and suddenly we we uh, lose the opportunity to win these chips. So I, I like the bet on the turn. Um, here, um, we take that down. So what, why Deutsche getting involved again? Really small C bet this time. That's sixth pot. So it's, that was a. We would probably say that his uh, his weak C bets are are weak. Uh, here opening to two point. one x this time uh absolutely fine there on this flop getting it in against the uh against the sh short stack uh with 10 bigs i don't really know what he's flattened with 10 bigs there um but i only check raises us when we've got a decent ace and in such fantastic odds we're never we're never folding that's uh that's good uh, i'm gonna try just uh just trying to speed through this a little bit more i don't know if um people are finding it a little bit too slow I just feel I want to pick up the pace a little bit. I realise we're in, only on hand 41 and we're about 30 minutes into the video. So I just want to try and pick the pace up a little bit. I hope this uh, me clicking isn't going to be too annoying for everyone. So let me know if it is. Um, let me know if you like the uh, me just uh, playing through the hands and talking about other players' uh, hands as well. Um, I, don't, I think we've picked up a few few good spots of how you know the uh, other players at the table are playing so uh, just let me know about that uh, here 5x isolating this guy who has about just under 30 bigs um, he's limped from early position I don't mind checking here I don't mind isolating either uh, I just wonder if you'd be able to get him to fold here if he does fold then brilliant um, but he's going to be playing the whole hand in position and there are not going to be that many flops that we're going to be thrilled with but he does fold so a good result um, there, something to keep an eye on. This guy limp folds from early position. Um, eight, seven off suit. Um, I could see a, an open here. I mean, the stacks behind really can only be three betting, really, I would say, really, really strong hands because um, you have an opportunity to four bet and then they'd have to, they've already committed quite a lot of their stack, um, probably priced in to call cool your, cool your four bet. So um, I. I might make it 3.30 here and um, play the pot post-flop in position. Uh, here with the 9.8 suited, yeah, I like this. Um, I know it, I mean, once the anti's come in, I really, really like opening hands like this in late position. Uh, well, actually from, from any position. Uh, but this spot, again, the stack's behind. The big blind has a great sh stack for uh, for re-stealing here, uh, three bet shoving. Um, but even pre-ante, I, I doubt he's going to be doing that uh, particularly weak. 
Um, so, and if he does shove, we can just fo we can just fold. Uh, it's quite easy. Uh, picking up the queens here. So, why Deutschry getting involved? Uh, I know we've seen this guy to be a, a a real fish here. I just wonder if shoving is going to um, get him to call as many hands as we'd like. Uh, we already saw when we had tens, we three bet. Uh, at sort of standard size and he called and then folded on the flop um, so I think I prefer um, see you know we could three bet to 750 here um, and look to get it in on the flop and trying to get him to make mistakes here we're not really given the opportunity unless he has say a pocket pair or um, let's say ace 10 I'll see that he decides to he thinks he's good here um, he's unlikely to call that off whereas he might flat out of position with those hands and we you know we absolutely crush crush that um so and he does fold so unfortunately we don't pick up any chips there uh, let's move on so oh my dodgy still being pretty ag interesting to see what he does here he calls a turn and folds on the on the riv. Um, well, let's just move on. Uh, five six off again. You could open here. The stacks again. If they three bet, they commit themselves already to the to the pot. Um, in my opinion, so you could you could open. Uh, although I can't fold um, fold in there either, uh, especially this early. Again with with antis, I'm uh, probably open this 100 percent of the time in this spot with these stacks behind. Moving on. Let's just move on. Trying to pick up spots of because the uh, the stacks are getting quite short now. We've got an 18 big blind, 21, 22, 16, 10 bigs, 40 plus 30. Um, be good to try and pick up on some ranges and try and range our opponents now. See uh, how we feel. Uh, what sort of hands they're getting in uh, with certain stack sizes uh, just to give us an idea of when we're in that spot we have an opportunity to call or to to shove or to to re-steal against these players just to see what you know what's going to be most profitable at the moment we're still seeing post slot play um i think this is guy was the one i know he we knocked out the guy that was down here before uh calling with 10 bigs but again this guy's decided to call with 10 bigs with three two suited um, well played. <laughs> um, okay, why do I limp in this time? Uh, letting it go. Let's move on. Okay, so seventeen big blind shove uh, call here from D twenty seven to twenty six bigs. Uh, that's yeah, absolutely standard. Nothing really to note there. Uh, let's move on. Okay, and here again, uh, so really to note, I actually really like why Deutsche shove here. If he three bets um, small, it looks super strong to this guy. Uh, not this guy's going to fold ace king suited, but he might uh, fold a, you know, ace jack in this spot. Well, he has committed quite a few of his chips. Um, so I like the shove here, make it look as weak as possible. Uh, just he does. Make some chips there, which is good for us because he's on our right. So pick up aces here. Uh, so this guy who has less than 20 bigs decides to open from early position. I think it's unlikely he's going to be folding. Um, this guy decides to shove in with 13 and a half bigs. So that we, I was, we, we're never folding with our aces, but it's trying to get as much value from them as possible. I think if we flat, it looks it looks really really strong. Um, I think shoving looks it's much much weaker try and make a hand look like ace king so mind games you know with his pocket nines that uh, decide oh yeah definitely I'm definitely getting it in here um, whereas if we, we call he might I doubt he I doubt he probably folds his pocket nines there but um, you know try, again trying to give them an opportunity uh, to make mistakes um, we make our hand look as, as weak as possible by shoving. Make it, I guess we're making it look like an ace-king, ace-queen type of hand by shoving. That's really good. I really like that. 
Um, yeah, he does call it off. And fortunately, we lose to this set. Uh, so let's move on. A stack suited here, so just under 50 bigs. Um, 40 bigs effective. Yeah, I think this 3.5x is probably a little bit too much. He probably goes for between 500 and 600 here. Uh, he does make the flat. Um, here, I just see that probably half pop. Uh, she do, and he folds. That's fine. Pretty standard. Um, I don't mind limping behind here. A couple of big stacks in the in the blinds. You're going to be playing in position. Um, I'd probably yeah, I would probably limp here, mate. You've got enough chips to to do it with. Um, okay, suit here is going to fold that. Yeah, king four off. Uh, eight six off. Yeah, it's all good. Fifty bigs. So still before anties, so we're not worrying about stealing stealing much. Okay, so the anties kicked in. Forty big bigs now. Uh, I would be looking to open up my game quite a lot, especially against uh, the appropriate stacks behind us. Uh, we'll hopefully get into a discussion about that in a minute. And the opportunity uh, presents itself. Okay, 9-10 off suit. Um, again, I mean, I, I don't advocate limping much in, in tournaments. Um, but here, I mean, if it was 10-9 suited, I think we could we could limp behind again, play the pot in position, uh, stab at any pot if it gets checked around, give us another opportunity to, to win uh, to win the pot and to make some chips. So I don't mind limping here. I don't think we can isolate um, here unless we know this guy, uh, Mr. Poker, her, uh, uh, folds a lot to C-bets. So I don't mind the limp here, but obviously there's a stack behind us as well that um, could easily just shove in. Uh, but although we are only committing one big blind, so I, I don't mind a, a, a limp there um, with a with a connector, uh, just trying to smash a flop. I think that's uh, I think that's fine. It'd be interesting to hear what your everyone else's thoughts are on that with the uh, ten and off suit here. I just think you know we have an opportunity to to hit big and then we play the pot in position as well. Uh, let's move on. Yeah, folding the 6-4 off. Yeah, folding the king-6 off. Okay, I'm going to wrap up part one there. Um, a few things to think about then in the early stages that we've seen. Uh, one's being careful defending the big blind pre-ante with weak holdings and getting yourself into trouble post-flop. Uh, another is looking at adjusting your C-bet size to get the same result without risking as many chips. Uh, I really liked the 3-bet with 10s pre-ante against the player that was opening and then calling 3-bets uh, out of position a lot. Uh, I think looking to get value with uh, your strongest hands in that spot is really important. Uh, and in that instance, we were we were three bet for value and looking to play the pot in position against the fish. Uh, finally, I'd probably avoid donk leading altogether unless you know you're up against a competent player and you have a, a very strong hand. Uh, but all in all, I think you uh, played the early stages really well. And there are just a few things that will help you avoid trouble spots and losing unnecessary chips. Uh, so feel free to leave me some comments. Um, I've got the uh, part two coming up as well, um, where we're going to be looking more at, say, a push fold game, having uh, a shorter stack, so that will tie in nicely with my uh, shorts. Um, so, yeah, feel free to leave me some comments. Uh, this has been Gazellig for grinderscore.com, and until next time, good luck at the tables. Cheers, guys. Bye.